Uh, we want to switch back now to R. Kelly and that sentencing that just took place in federal court in Brooklyn. R. Kelly, the R&B singer, sentenced to 30 years in prison. We've been telling you this. Um, and uh, it happened just in the last hour or so. Uh, victims, survivors uh, speaking in court, addressing the court, uh, saying some things that were very powerful about their experience with R. Kelly. And R. Kelly maintains that he didn't do anything wrong here. And somebody who knows R. Kelly well is Steve Greenberg. He is his former attorney. He actually withdrew from the case uh, before the trial started, uh, shortly, just weeks before the trial started in federal court last year. Steve, thank you so much for coming on and uh, coming on and making time for us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Uh, your reaction, your thoughts on this 30-year sentence for R. Kelly, your former client. Well, first of all, I still represent uh, Robert on the state cases here in Illinois. Okay, so I apologize. Former attorney, <laughs> so sorry. But I, didn't do the, I didn't do the New York case. And unfortunately, you know, Robert has been plagued by poor choices about people for years. Uh, when he went with other counsel for the New York case, I think he made a poor decision because I don't think the court got the right flavor of the case. Look, this case, everyone has heard about R. Kelly and everyone says he, he abuses young women. In the case in New York, that wasn't what they prosecuted him for. They prosecuted him for uh, transmitting herpes, for taking someone who would, he lived with lawfully in Illinois to California, I believe to the Grammy Awards, and having sex with her there where it was considered underage sex. I have always thought that the New York prosecution was an abuse of what the law intended for a RICO case. And I think this sentence is just a further abuse of that. Uh, all of these people, when you, when you drill down in the discovery, were perfectly happy with their Gucci stuff and their fancy dinners and their private jet and all that. And no one ever complained. They didn't even complain after R. Kelly broke up with them. They didn't complain till years later when it sort of became the thing to do and to dump on R. Kelly. So I think the sentence is just an abomination. Well, Steve, some people would say, though, that that's part of the grooming process buying people Gucci, uh, you know, taking them on private jets, showing them this like jet set lifestyle uh, that can, you know, be part of that. I mean, we heard about things like this. We've heard about it in other cases. And, uh, you well, know, but, but let me let me let me interrupt you for a sec. OK, because there wasn't and no one said that he was grooming people in this case. Let me give you an example. There was a young lady that lived in Houston. She came up to New Jersey with her sister to see R. Kelly perform in concert. He took a liking to her. She went back to Houston. She came back voluntarily. He sent her plane ticket. She came back and she was very open. I wanted to be with this man. That's not grooming. Now, once you're with him, of course, he's a celebrity. He, he was a, a rock star. You're going to live that lifestyle. I, I mean, if he'd have said to somebody, look, I'm going to wear Versace clothes, but you have to wear Levi's and a T-shirt from The Gap because i that's just how I am, they would have left them. Um, well, so when was the last time you spoke to R. Kelly without, you know, saying anything that's going to violate, you know, attorney-client privilege? Well, I, that's, that's really not, I mean, I speak to him. Okay, how's he doing? He's doing terrible. He, he had his entire life uh, taken out from, from beneath him. You know, this is a man who really should be a billionaire, right? Sold more albums than Whitney Houston, more albums than Michael Jackson. And when I had first met him, he was living in a one-bedroom apartment that he rented because everybody has stolen from him over the years. Everyone has taken advantage of R. Kelly. Now, I understand that some of the choices he made in life are not such good choices. Um, and, and that in the, in the 90s, maybe he made choices uh, that are now coming back to haunt him. And I think the case here in Chicago might be a little bit different factually than the case in New York. But the case in New York is, is really where people are capitalizing. All of these people went on this so-called documentary. All of them got wined and dined. Are we going to say the documentary people were grooming them? All of them benefited from dumping on R. Kelly who's now going to sit in jail for years for what was 
95% consensual sex. Well, 95%, there's still 5% that, you're, that wouldn't be if that's what we're arguing here. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying it's 95% consensual sex. There is a 5% of that case that had nothing to do with sex. There was the bribery charge that was in there. That wasn't a sex charge. So every all of the predicate acts involved sexual acts except bribery. So, Steve, it, it almost sounds like you're saying it just became the in thing to do uh, to accuse R. Kelly of sexual abuse. And I'm, you know, transmitting herpes, that is a big deal. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. When you have a sexually transmitted a disease, deal, you have a duty to not spread it about and to inform partners of that. So, um, I, you know, I guess I'm just thinking, so you're thinking, you, you believe all of these these accusers made it all up and just kind of jumped on the bandwagon with one another. Well, I, I don't know that they made it all up, but let me, first of all, your, to your uh, sexually transmitted disease, he was prosecuted under a New York misdemeanor statute that had never been used to prosecute anybody. It had been on the books since 1944. Lots of people have given people herpes. Lots of people have given people the clap since 1944. And no one was prosecuted on it. And they made it into a federal crime by claiming that he did it. He crossed state lines. He went to New Jersey. That's how the case ended up there. But let's look at some of the other people. His former girlfriend, Azriel, who was very honest in, in when she testified, I will say, and she said, my mother sent me to a concert and said, you make this man fall in love with you. You're going to have his babies. You're going to be his girl, so on and so forth. They preyed on him. They preyed on him. And, and for them to now come to court and say they are victims is just being intellectually dishonest. But, but So you're saying that R. Kelly's the victim here? Absolutely. The 55-year-old multimillionaire is the victim? Well, he's not the multimillionaire. But yes, I believe he is a victim of people who wanted the situation, were in this situation. No one complained about anything. That's what people forget. No one complained until agents and prosecutors and TV producers went out and found these people. Nobody had complained. They didn't complain to their friends. They didn't complain to their family. They didn't complain to the media. Steve, uh, what's next uh, as far as the Chicago, the, or pardon me, the Illinois case goes? So what are you going to do with well, that? Well, his next case, his next case is up in Chicago and, and um, you know, I'm trying to provide whatever assistance I can to his attorneys on that case. Obviously, they'll have to evaluate how they're going to move forward with that case after this uh, uh, sentence. Um, I know that he's got very strong attorneys in, in New York. They wrote a wonderful post-trial motion. I think they're going to win on appeal because I don't think this is actually a RICO case. I don't think there was an enterprise that existed, which which would invoke the statute of limitations then, and the case would have to be thrown out. Um, the cases in, in state court in Illinois, we'll deal with them when they come up. We'll try every one of them and we'll prevail. Well, I guess we'll wait and see on all of that. So, uh, Steve Greenberg, I you know you're- play this clip afterwards. <laughs> We will believe us. We will archive it. We archive everything. Uh, we'll wait and see on all of that. Uh, still very serious charges that your client uh, faces, R. Kelly. Uh, I mean, child porn charges. It doesn't get more serious than that. So uh, we will wait and see. And we thank you for making time right. for us on this, uh, what I'm sure is a very busy afternoon for you. Steve Greenberg, uh, attorney for R. Kelly, withdrew from the case in New York, uh, but currently still represents him in other matters. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.